Hey guys, welcome back to Sockets and Sideburns. So today, yet another very common job on the Scenic, yet again, rear brake related, seized rear brake caliper, which on this car really is seized solid. Now in this video, we're gonna go over a little diagnosis and then we'll actually change the caliper. This car is a Scenic 3 1.5 DCI with electronic parking brake. And this procedure should be very similar on the McGann's and Grand Scenics as well. Now these calipers seizing on the Scenics, as I said, is very common. And the other side was done about two years ago. So you don't necessarily have to change both sides at the same time. They do outlast one another pretty well. One other thing to point out is that the electronic parking brake on these sees an awful lot. And that's actually nine times out of 10 gonna be the motor, not the caliper. I have a whole other video on manually releasing the EPB, diagnosing the fault and changing the motor. So be sure to check that out if you need it. Link in the description and a card up on the screen now. In fact, I'll just put a card up on the screen now for the whole scenic rear brake playlist. Yes, there's a playlist. Now, as always, links for parts and any tools I use will be left in the description. Let's get to it. Right, we'll start with diagnosis. These calipers are not cheap, so we wanna make sure the caliper is actually the fault. To get started, we'll need to have the front wheels chocked up, first gear and jack the back of the car up, get the wheel off. Then we need to put the electronic parking brake into maintenance mode. Uh, for me, all of this is already done. As you can see, I'm in the middle of changing the pads and discs. If you need more information on any of those things, then check out my pads and disc video for this car, where I show all that in detail. Card up on the screen and link in the description. As I said, I've already been working here, but I've reattached everything that would be in the way stopping you getting the caliper off. You'll just have to use your imagination for the other stuff, the disc and whatnot. So there are usually two scenarios where you're gonna find out about a seized caliper. You're gonna notice the brake is very hot and probably stinks. Maybe the vehicle pulls to one side or maybe you notice abnormal pad wear like we had here. Or like me, you're doing the rear pads, you go to push the piston back and it's stuck solid. Now, if you've already discovered that the piston isn't going back, then you can crack on with this testing. Otherwise, make sure you rule out the other reasons for binding brakes like C sliders and pads. Again, check out my brake pads video for this car for more details on that. Okay, we need to crack this bleeder off first to do the testing. So let's get it wire brushed and give it a squirt with some penetrant, then we'll pull that little protective cap off. Let's get these 213s out so that we can dismount the caliper to test it. Now you need to counter hold the hex on the slide pin and you will need a slim line spanner to fit in here. A regular one isn't gonna go in there and it's a 15 mil to counter hold. Crack them loose with a spanner. bottom one as well. And to get around the brake line at the top, I use a wobble extension with a 13 mil socket on. It'll get us out quicker and we need to torque these bolts back up when we're finished anyway, so we will need a socket. We will need a wobble extension to get around that brake line that's in the way of the top bolt. the bottom one out first. And then the top one, just have it on wobble, get it on there and then fix. Your ratchet onto that. So make sure you get good engagement. You will also need to just unclip the wiring from the EPB at the bottom here. This one's already out from earlier, but all that does, just pull this clip up. They just ratchet closed like that. Just pull it up. 
back and you can get the wiring out just to give us a bit more slack. Then we've got to hang our caliper up. I've got these sturdy hooks to do that with. And hang it on the spring here. Make sure you hang it off something, whether it's a hook or a bungee, anything like that. We just don't want to stress the hose. Okay, I'll just give this a little push back to show you what we're dealing with here. Get a pad in there and the piston push back tool. As you can see, pressure on here on the piston and it's going nowhere at all. So the first thing to check is the hose, which if it internally collapses will not allow the piston to go back. So the way to do that is to open up the bleeder to give the fluid behind the piston another route out. These are 11 millimeters and we'll try and get a spanner on here first. Right, these bleeders, I've given it a wire brush down and a spray with some plus gas. Now, basically we've got pressure on the piston. So the idea is if the brake line has failed, we'll open the bleeder up. That will give the fluid somewhere to go rather than back up the brake line. But if it's the piston that's seized, this is gonna do absolutely nothing whatsoever. Hopefully it will crack loose. Otherwise we're gonna have to remount everything. Oh. Okay, so I've just remounted the caliper, put the guide pin bolts back in hand tight, just so that I can now crack the bleeder off. It'll be much easier with this caliper fixed in place. And thanks again to Renault for sticking the brake pipe straight above where we want to be. Now what I'm going to do now, since I know it's tight, I'm going to use a six point. We are literally just going to crack it. There might be a little fluid leakage, but it's not going to be much. We're not going to lose much at all. We know we're going to be replacing either the line or the caliper, so we'll be bleeding it out anyway, but we aren't going to lose hardly any fluid. Now what I've done is I've got that wobble extension and a six point socket and we'll just watch the socket. There we go. So it's coming now. That is very stiff. Go in a little bit because give it a work in. Don't want to snap it off in case the caliper is not the problem. Right, we're losing brake fluid now. I can see it coming. So what I'll do now is I will dismount from the caliper bracket Okay. And get a spanner on here. With a bleeder kit. Okay, get our Push back tool back in and we'll see. If it'll go back now.
So we'll put a little pressure on. There we go. We're still working this bleeder. Get a bit more penetrant down in it. Okay, we've got brake fluid coming now, if you can see that. And we'll just see if she'll push back. I do not think. No, that's making no, no difference at all. You can see I'm going maximum pressure. We're not getting any extra. We've released the brake, flu brake fluid, so there's somewhere for it to go. And of course, we're still not going back. So we've verified that it is the caliper and not the line. The caliper on the other side was done years ago, so I'm not particularly surprised about this. Okay, caliper assembly loosely mounted back up again, bolts in hand tight again, and the bleed nipple is nipped back up. So that rules out the hose. One important thing that I did forget to mention there is that if the bleeder doesn't allow any fluid out at all, then in all probability it's actually blocked up. So pull it out, give it a clean, and then try the test again. Some fluid should really be coming out of the bleeder. Okay, the second thing to check is the handbrake mechanism behind this motor on the back here. Now I know we put it into maintenance mode, so it should be fully wound back, but it only takes a few minutes to get the motor off and to check it. Usually, if the car has a problem rewinding the EPB, it will say failure to complete or something like that. But let's just check it. Okay, so around the back now. Firstly, we need to get this wiring connector off. This red catch here slides back. You might need to you know, get a screwdriver sometimes to push that back. And then the plug should just pull off. If it doesn't, there's a little gray catch here. And if you give it just a push in, you'll hear a click. That should be it disengaging and then it comes off. Uh, these can be difficult, these connectors. So my video for changing the motors on these goes over this in detail, how to get these off and get them back on. So check that out if you struggle with this connector. So if this motor is original still, the TRW one, you'll have two T27 screws here and here to get out. Now mine is a replacement motor, so they're hex 5 Allen 5s. We'll take these out and then take the motor off. There goes one. And the other. 
Right, just wiggle this motor off. It should just wiggle off. Might take. There is a rubber seal in here to overcome. There we are. And then we're going to be operating this screw on the back here. So we can turn this screw with either a Allen 7 or a T45. And this just basically operates a plunger on a jacking screw behind the piston and that pushes it in and out and that's operated by the motor. That's how the EPB works on these. And if we wind it righty tighty, that will release the handbrake and lefty loosey will apply. So obviously we want it released. So if we try to turn it right, it's not going anywhere. So it's fully wound back. And if we try to turn it left, it's fine. So ours has run all the way back and moving freely. Now, if ours was moving freely, but it wasn't all the way back, then something has gone wrong with the EPB motor or the EPB control. Check the video I mentioned for changing the motor out for more details on that. Now, if this screw was actually seized and say the motor had either burnt out trying to wind it back or something like that, then we would still need a new caliper as that whole assembly is built into the caliper anyway. Now I'm going to leave the EPB motor off now while we change the caliper over. It's one less plastic thing to worry about if we have to use heat here on the union or anything like that. Just remember to refit the motor to the caliper if you're getting an exchange caliper because they'll want that motor with it as well. And if you are actually going to refit the motor to use it again, make sure you put a little Loctite on the screws as they came with that originally. Okay, so now we can be sure the caliper is the issue. Let's change it over. There isn't much to take off here, but there is one potentially very difficult thing, which is the brake union to the caliper itself. Now this one is original and has never been touched, so it's about as bad as it gets. What we want to do here is give ourselves every available chance of breaking this loose. What we want to try and avoid is relying too much on brute force to try and break the rust bond here. So the first step, and so often neglected, is cleaning. Get a wire brush and get as much of this rust and dirt away from this fitting as possible to give our penetrants the best chance of getting down in here. Get all round the threads and round the top here. Really make sure you get into those threads. Try and pull as much of that out as you possibly can. A lot of it will actually be mud. And then a quick dose for brake clean. Okay, next up, I'm gonna strike on the caliper around the union with a punch and hammer. And all I'm trying to do here is shock the rust bond. Now, don't go crazy. The caliper is aluminium, and if you wreck it and you've got an exchange caliper, they might reject your return. Okay, now most people will go for heat here. I will if I have to, but first, we can go in the opposite direction with freeze spray. This will cool down the union and hopefully break right through that rust. So read the instructions on whatever brand you choose. I will leave a link in the description to some. I'm gonna hit the union at a few different points a few times to maximize the effects. I'll get the union itself right at the gap where it threads into the caliper. 
and also down the back where it attaches to the pipe and the union itself. Now with these sprays you need a good, with this one, 10 to 15 seconds to get the effect but really longer is better. So let's shake up the can and give it a liberal dosing. Slide a drain pan underneath. Now if you had brake pads currently installed you might want to remove the, those before you do this or otherwise just shield them with a rag or something like that because of course you can't get lubricants on friction material. Okay. It smells like deep heat in here now. That's the opposite of what we're trying to go for. Right, now a really important step. Just walk away. Either crack on with something else for at least half an hour, or better yet, get yourself a brie. Now ideally you want to leave this for a good few hours, or even days really, and keep coming back and hitting that union again and again with either free spray or some kind of penetrant plus gas, something like that. Okay, I've waited a full day now, coming back a few times to spray this union down again. Now, before we take the union off, we need to consider how we will control the brake fluid leaking out. If the master cylinder runs dry, we're gonna be in serious trouble and bleeding every brake. Now, usually, we would clamp the flexi line here, However, we cannot clamp this line. These lines are actually not normal rubber lines. They're steel braided with a black rubber coating. If you clamp this line, it's just gonna bend that steel mesh in and the line is crushed. I've seen it and it's not pretty. Don't do it. Uh, there are lots of other methods that you can use, a pedal press or a piece of wood on the brake pedal to stop the master cylinder draining down, or you can tighten the master cylinder cap down on some cling film so it's pulling on a vacuum when it tries to drain out. I've, I've got some fluid stoppers and bungs, so I'll be using those today. And what I always like to do first, regardless of what I'm doing to stop fluid loss, is top the brake fluid reservoir right up. You won't have to worry about taking any back out because we have to bleed it anyway. Now, if you're struggling to see the level, if your bottle's old and discolored like this one, get yourself a torch and shine it through the bottle towards you and you should be able to see the fluid level easily. Now, uh, just a quick word of caution on these. They're mounted to the scuttle, which over the years can droop down like this one has. Add to that the fact that the car is up at the back and that's increasing the angle even further. Although we can look full at the front, it's entirely possible that we aren't even reaching the feed pipe at the back of this reservoir here. And we could easily drain the true reservoir without even realizing. So what I do is just wedge up the front of this reservoir to make it much more level. However, as I mentioned, we do have a saving grace here. This reservoir is not the true reservoir for the master cylinder. That's actually down here. This one is basically just a top off that has been put here because the one down there would be impossible to get to. So that's a lot of built-in safety there before you run dry. Okay, let's have our first go at this union. Now with these, obviously, no open-ended spanners. These unions are usually soft and corroded, so it's gonna round easy. We wanna use a flare nut spanner for this. Now this is the one instance where I can honestly say that the snap-on is 100% worth it. With this tool, it's buy once, cry once. Now, and this union is 11 mil. Also, before you start, just make a note of the angle of this pipe here as it goes into the caliper. If you get it too far in towards the car, then the flexi line is gonna chafe. All right, let's give it a go. Just feel that torque. Don't push it too hard if it doesn't feel like it wants to go. There we go. 
Now, important to note, see here, the union, when we turn the union, we're turning the entire line. You see that? The line's going with the union. Do not keep trying to undo the union from the caliper. If you do that, you're gonna break it off of the line here, and then you'll be replacing the whole line. If we just run this back and forward a few times, it's not gonna let go, but I wanna be sure that it's loose, which it is. And then what I'm gonna do is dismount the caliper and turn the caliper off of the line. Once we've got the caliper off the line, what we can then do is heat up the union and that will expand it and free it off of the pipe. You will need to get it loose before you fit the new caliper on as there's no way the threads are gonna line up with the new caliper. They'll be in a different place and that'll end up putting the pipe in a different place. As I said, it can't because it will then chafe on the body of the vehicle. Right, if we just take out our two 13 mil guide pin bolts. Now I've got a drain pan here because there's going to be a fair amount, I mean, the, going to be a fluid loss from the caliper itself, which is going to be full of brake fluid. Even if the line doesn't start to leak, we will have brake fluid loss from the caliper because we probably end up having to turn it upside down. We'll see. Start working it. You counter hold that union. So we're actually winding off the union there. My pipe is not completely seized. In fact, I think it's just come free just from doing that. Yeah, it's moving nice now. As I say, do not, under any circumstances, force, that's literally gonna be hand. Now I think, yeah, that's coming out by hand. Do not force that. Just heat the union up on the line and it will come free from the pipe after you've got it out. That saves us dropping out a bunch of brake fluid. And if you see, that's how you want this union spinning freely on the pipe. And you can even bring her all the way up here just to make sure that there was no damage to that bit of pipe that was in the caliper. Because sometimes if you crack that without realizing it, that's gonna leak, which in this case, it's fine. Okay, we're losing. We get our stopper ready. And actually get it in the right place. Just verify before you walk away that you're getting no more drips. Because obviously it can drip into here and take a few seconds to start coming down. But that spun that off. Right. Another cheeky little trick, if you're in a bind with this line, you haven't got anything to bung it off or you forgot to bring over anything that's handy, believe it or not, this will blow your mind matrix style. What if I told you there was something right here with the caliper that can bung that line off? Just grab your bleed nipple cap and you can stick that over the end of the line and it should bung it off. The only reason I don't recommend it is that it is very easily knocked off the end of the line. Right, with this out, that line bunged off, let's head over to the bench and have a chat about replacement parts. So of course there are two options for fixing this problem we have here. We can either replace this caliper or refurbish it. Now I don't have time to wait for the parts and refurbish this today, but I will do it in the future. And if that's done and you're watching this video, then there'll be a link in the description and a card up on the screen right now. Now for today, 
what we have is a replacement. Now these calipers can be pricey, 150 on euro with a 60 pound surcharge. Now I found this one for 117 pounds with no surcharge. You see here, brake caliper without surcharge. I'll leave a link in the description and where I got this from, it was literally delivered the next day. And a five year guarantee against defects, you can see there. So hopefully it'll work out the box. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Let's open it up and have a look. Got an instructional on mechanical handbrakes, which we don't have, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so these do come with the EPB motor attached on there. So we don't need to worry about swapping that over. But if yours is still working, or as the one that we just took off of our old caliper was nearly new, then it's worth saving the old one, as the motors fail frequently and they work on either side. Now what we wanna do, obviously, is just give it a quick check next to the old one. Check your mountains are the same. Try not to spill brake fluid out of the old one. I should have drained that out. Mountains are the same, inlet port in the same place, bleeder in the same place. All looks good. Let's get it mounted on the car. Right, as you can see, shiny new disc and pads have appeared here. You'll obviously need pads in place for when you refit your caliper. If you uh, bring the piston out and there's no pads there, it's just gonna pop out. All right, we'll refit our two 13 mil caliper guide pin bolts. These need a little Loctite on. I've given them a clean up with a wire brush to get the old stuff off. And then just gonna put some Loctite 243 on them. I'll leave a link for this in the description. Just a smidge. You can kind of see where it was before, not at the end of the bolt. That's a bit too much again. This stuff ain't cheap. Share it out. Right, offer our caliper up. Just watch your brake line. Try not to knock whatever stopping the fluid coming out, if anything, off. that on, run in these two 13s just by hand. Right, let's run these two all the way home. Need that slimline 15 again. Won't so much need the wobble extension this time because brake line's not in the way. Well, after a fashion, still in the way. And the torque for these two is 35. NM. One. And we do still need the extension to get round the EPB motor on the bottom. go. We get the EPB plug back on the motor now. It should just push on but they can be a little bit difficult. You want to make sure that it clicks into position. <sighs> I 
and basically until you've got it on far enough that red catch isn't going to come forwards but sometimes especially with non-original motors you actually need to get this started in the first place give it a helping hand again I go over this in a bit more detail in my video for changing these motors out but basically you need to hook up the little red catch and get it started in the first place otherwise like that and draw it back just so it's on the top of the black tab that's engaging otherwise these won't go in and then we can give it another go there we go you hear that click and then that catch slides forward and then just give it a good tug on the plug not the wires to confirm that you got it on there but that's the trick for getting these on all right now we're going to fit the union back into the caliper we're going to start off just by hand the thread on this is fine pitch m10 by one so i'm always going to backtrack wait for that click then run it in by hand put a rag cleanliness is paramount here as well we do not want to introduce any dirt into the brake system but I'm just doing this to protect against any brake fluid going on the pads and whatnot. All right we'll pull out this shipping bung we can use that on our old caliper to bung it up all right then we're going to remove the clamp that we had and try and work fairly quick if we can and I will just try and bung it with my finger while I wait but don't let the hose force you where you don't want to be there we go take your time with it don't be forcing it Then we'll start running it in. And as we get close to bottoming out, make sure we get that line, the solid line, roughly where it was before. And these do not need a crazy, I just did this, this was about finger width away from the bolt, pointing pretty much dead forward. We do not want a crazy amount of torque on this. You don't need loads of torque to seal. The torque I believe for these is only 13 Nm. And as we come over, what we're gonna find is that pipe's gonna try and come with us, so we do that final tighten, set it back a little, not quite that much. And give it that pinch up. Just a pinch is all that's needed for this. It'll stop pretty positively. And as I said, 
it's only 13 nm for these anyway. And then just give in here a quick, try to shield the brakes, give it a quick blast with brake clean so that any leaks, if there are any, as we start to do bleeding and when we test later, we'll show straight up on here. If we clean around that union. Okay, now everything is back together. We need to bleed this brake. It really should just be this caliper that needs filling and bleeding out, and we shouldn't have to bleed any other brakes, I hope. There are various methods to do this. Pressure bleeding and just pedal bleeding are my favorites. For this, I'm doing it with the pedal because it will just be quicker for just one. But first, we'll have this little cap off the bleed nipple. Take that off. And then let's see if these are still because this is not an original caliper. 10 mil. 10 mil. So it should have come, yeah, it's come tight. So we'll start over here. Connect our bleeder kit. This is the Visi Bleed kit, non return, one man style bleeder. Pop that over the bleeder. And it would be nice, even though it is non-return, just to get the hose on a bit of an upswing. If it'll allow us. Let's see if we can't wedge it. Going over the top of you guys. Thanks for the help. Right, now we've got an assistant in the driver's seat to press the brake pedal for us. So with the one-man kits like the VisiBleed here, you don't actually need two people. You can just leave the nipple open and start pumping, obviously keeping an eye on the level of your master cylinder. But I've got an assistant here, so I'll just stay here closing the nipple off and monitoring the air. So if you pump the brake pedal up five times, and then push down and hold. Should hear a good amount of air coming out there. Okay, up. Right, pump up five times again. Right, hold down. Open the bleeder up again. Pump up. Pump up five more times again. How's that pedal feeling? Much better. Right, hold down. And here comes brake fluid. Good stuff. Watching for these air bubbles to go, pinch off. Okay, five times again. Down and hold. Do not seem to be seeing very much air at all coming out there. Okay, up. Now, just to point out here as we're bleeding, the piston will obviously start to come out. Now, if you're pressure bleeding, this will not happen. You might want to disconnect your pressure bleeder from the master cylinder, then give the pedal a good few pump ups to get the piston out, then carry on pressure bleeding, as when the piston comes out, that can actually dislodge a bit more air from there. And what's also good to do, get yourself any handy spanner and just give a few light taps around where the piston is just to dislodge any more air that might be clinging to the walls in there 
This will let those air bubbles rise to the surface, rise to the, where the bleed nipple is. And just be sure as you're going that you keep checking the level of your master cylinder. All right, I'll have another five pumps. Okay, down and hold. Pump up five more times. Try and get that on there a bit better. It's leaking from around the hose. Okay, down and hold. I'm not really seeing only the initial air that came out. Up, pump five times. Down and hold. Okay, I'm happy with that. I haven't seen any air for a good long while now. And have we got firm pedal feel? Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, one more thing just to add there real quick is I always pinch off the bleed nipple, so I'll close it off as your assistant is on the downstroke there, just so you don't suck any air back in around the threads of the bleed nipple. And one more thing to mention is if you're struggling to get the air out of here, you've still got a spongy brake pedal, what can happen sometimes is the EPB actually needs to be ran out so that it, you bring it out of maintenance mode and then you might have to carry on trying to bleed after that because it can be that that will dislodge a bit more air. So we've got good pedal feel now, nice and solid. So all we need to do is check for leaks. We'll take away the bleed kit, trying not to when we remove the remove it from the nipple to get brake fluid everywhere because it always spurts off. And if anyone was curious, I'm just going to pinch it up, but I believe the torque for these bleeders is 10 Nm. And then I will just give it a dose, both the bleeder and the union should still be clear, which it is. So I'll give the bleeder a quick dose with some brake clean, just to make sure, as I say, when we bury the pedal down, we will see any leaks. Right, so we just want to check for leaks at every fitting that we've disturbed. So the union on the brake caliper here, and obviously the bleeder as well. So get your assistant to just bury the brake pedal into the firewall as hard as they can. And then you're gonna come and at every point you disturbed, you're gonna have a look around there for any leaks. Any leaks are unacceptable. If you've got any, you need to find the cause and sort it out. I cannot see any weeping whatsoever from around there. Perfect. And then we're just gonna refit our dust cover back to the bleed nipple. The new one that came with this one, this caliper is not a very tight fit. So I'll just stick the old one back on save the new one for later maybe. And then I did forget to mention earlier on, don't forget to reclip your EPB wiring back into the holder here. Lift up and in she goes. Just click that down. So stick this wheel back on and take the rear brakes out of maintenance mode. Make sure you don't have anything left under the vehicle. 
anything sharp in particular. Okay, just give these a pinch up with a half inch drive. Talk it properly when we're on the ground. All right, now we deactivate maintenance mode on the rear brakes. Key into the key card holder. Diagnostics. Renault. We do need to be quick because the start stop, the ignition will time out on us if we're not careful. Just go straight into service. Electronic parking brake, configure function, deactivate maintenance mode. There we are, all done. Key card out. All right, just give it a quick test. We'll spin him free with the brakes off. Brake pedal applied. Rock solid, released, spinning again. Handbrake on. Yeah, locked up and released. Let go of the foot brake. <laughs> there we go, perfect. Right, we get her back down on the ground now. Okay, now with the car level, check our master cylinder. Make sure we got a good level. As I said, these do need tilting up to check properly, but that's great. All right, drop the bonnet. Check we've not left anything in here. Easy enough to do on a job like this where you're not actually working on the engine. And torque the wheels up. And just a quick check underneath, make sure that hose isn't chafing on anything or gonna come into contact with the body when the suspension is loaded. And lastly, torque our wheel nuts up. These are 17 mil and 110 nm. One, two, Three, four, five. 
Okay guys, that's this job finished. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or it's helped you out at all, please hit that like button for me. If you'd like to see more videos in the future, then don't forget to subscribe. And you can find me over on Instagram, at Sockets and Sideburns. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.